Hello, this is Geometry Topic 9-6. We're talking about parallel lines and proportional parts and triangles. And here, we have a triangle proportionality theorem. It says that if a line is parallel to one side of a triangle and intersects the other two sides in two distinct points, then it separates these sides into segments of proportional length. So, let's go ahead and write down what that actually means. That means that CB relates to CA in the same way that CD relates to CE. We have a proportion here. It also means that BA relates to CA in the same way that DE represents CE. It also says that CB relates to BA as CD relates to DE. And that BA relates to DE in the same way that CA relates to CE. Basically what it means that if these are parallel, then we have a lot of proportions that we can use. Okay. Some other things that I want to point out is that 1 and 4 are corresponding angles, so they're congruent. And 2 and 3 are also corresponding angles, so that they are congruent. Uh, that may pop up, uh, it may not, but it's something that you should be able to know. So let's go to our first example. We want to find the value of x. So we're going to set up a proportion. x over 1 equals 8 over 2. It's really that simple. x over 1 equals 8 over 2. We cross, multiply, and divide. 8 times 1 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. So x equals 4. take a look at example number two. Same thing, but they've turned the triangle around for us. So we're going to set this up as 3 over 5 plus x is equal to 4 over 8 plus x. This one over that one equals this one over that one. And now when we cross multiply, we actually have an algebraic expression. We have 3 times 8 plus x equals 4 times 5 plus x. So we have 24 plus 3x equals 40 plus 4x. Subtract 3x. 24 equals 40 plus x. Uh, subtract 40. Uh, 24 uh, on 24 minus 40 is negative 16. And that's how that works. Um, just double checking my answers a little bit. Alright. Just wanted to make a look because this answer actually doesn't make any sense as far as X goes. But nevertheless, algebraically, this is what we get. So let's take a look at example number three. Here we have x plus one over x equals six over four. So we cross multiply and we get that four times x plus one equals six x. So four x plus four equals six x. So 
subtract 4x, we'll get that 4 equals 2x. So x must be 2. And on number 4, we have that 6 over y is 9 over 2x plus minus 1. But I can't solve anything because I've got x and y. So let's see if we can figure out something. This says that RT is 10. Well, if RT is 10, and this is 6, 10 minus 6 is 4. So the y is not y. The y is 4. Well, now that we know that y is 4, I can actually do a little bit of cross-multiplying and dividing. 6 times 2x minus 1 equals 9 times 4, which is 36. Now, normally I would say distribute. However, I have to know that 36 will divide by 6. So that will give me 2x minus 1 equals 6. Add 1, 2x must equal 7. So x equals 3.5. Again, you could have distributed and solved. Um, you didn't have to. Hopefully your understanding of algebra is such that you can still get this. If you need me to work it out with it distributing, please let me know in class, and I will show you how to work this out with distributing. Let's go ahead and look at our next theorem. Proportional parts of the triangle can be used to prove the converse of this theorem. So if a line intersects two sides of a triangle and separates the sides into corresponding segments of proportional lengths, then the line is parallel. So what we're saying is that EFG, EG is 15, EH is 5, LG is 12, and FL is 6. We want to determine if these are, in fact, parallel. Well, the whole thing is 15. 15 minus 5 means that this piece is 10. So does 5 over 10 equal 6 over 12? Yes, it does. So that means that HL is, in fact, parallel to EF. Five over 10 is 1 half, six over 12, they're both equal to 1 half in case you did not realize that. So let's go ahead and continue this and see what example number six has to offer us. Well, example number six says we need to find x to prove that these are parallel. So we're going to try to prove that D is parallel to CB. They tell us that AC is 30, AE 22, AD is 10, and EB is X plus 4. Well, that means that this piece must be 20 because 30 minus 10 is 20. And so 20 over 10 must equal x plus 4 over 22. Now I can cross multiply and divide, but first I see that I can actually simplify this. By dividing both those by 10, I get that this must equal 2 over 1. So now when I cross multiply, I get that x plus 4 must equal 44. When we subtract 4 from both sides, we get that x must equal 40. So this was actually solving just like we solved on the other page. The question was just worded a little bit differently where they said 
We want these to be parallel, so what is x? All right, let's take a look at our third theorem for the day. A segment whose endpoints are the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side of the triangle, and its length is half the length of the third side. What that says is it says that if I have a mid-segment that is, well, every mid-segment will be parallel. So if I have a mid-segment then I have proportional sides. Okay? And this is half the length of that. So first off, I know that these two must be equal. So I'm going to set 4y plus 6 equal to 2y plus 18. Subtract 2y on both sides. 2y plus 6 equals 18. 2y equals 12. y equals 6. And 4x minus 5 times 2 must be x plus 11. So 8x minus 10, x plus 11. 7x minus 10 is 11. 7x is 21. Therefore, x equals 3. Hopefully the algebraic steps on the second half you know. Um, if not, then you need to desperately practice your algebra so that you are uh, capable of doing the geometry problems. Okay. Again, I distributed by 2, subtracted x, added 10, divided by 7. And now we're on number 8. Same thing. 2y plus 18 is going to equal 5y minus 3. 18 equals 3y minus 3. 21 is 3y, so y is 7. And for over here, 5x minus 2 times 2 must equal 72. Distribute 10x minus 4 is 72. 10x equals, we add 4, 76. x equals 7.6. So, um, this is mostly just setting up proportions, uh, solving, some cross multiplying, um, and a little bit of setting equations equal to each other for this mid-segment. Um, all in all, there's not a whole lot that is new except for now you know the relationships between these and then the rest is just algebra. So, have a good day and good luck on your assignment.